Hello Enchanted Ones, and welcome today to a very special episode. Today I will be showing you how I turned my lounge into my most dream enchanted vision, using inspiration from my favourite place, the Enchanted Wood. So sit back, relax, and enjoy my enchanted makeover. Over the past year, I have been decorating my home with items that inspire me, all taken, of course, with inspiration from nature. But recently, I have been wanting to go one step further, as I just want to feel totally transported into the woods when I am home, but also because some of my decorations are not that pleasing anymore. So last week, I plucked up the courage to message my landlord an important question. Can I paint the walls? And to my delight, she replied, Of course! Naturally, I began to look on Pinterest to see if anything inspired me, but nothing was really sticking, as I wanted my walls to be something meaningful to me. So I let my inspiration brew for a few days, and lo and behold, the idea actually came to me, just as I was dozing off to sleep. I saw a skyline that I had seen a hundred times before, a skyline that was no other place than my enchanted woods. The next day I visited the woods to remind myself of this beautiful place, and there it was. What I love about this view is that it tells a story. You can see the tall trunks of the fir trees mixed with the quirky oak trees peeking their winding branches through. It gives such depth to the woods. It was a sight I had seen a hundred times before, but never truly realised how beautiful it was. It was right then and there I decided to name this place the Tangled Lookout. So I then planned what I was going to do. I first drew the shapes of the two walls I wanted to make over and then drew the shape of the trees from the Tangled Lookout onto this. And then I went to the hardware shop. I chose some sample paint pots. Surprisingly, I'm not all about bright colours. For my walls and furniture, I love tonal colours, but when it comes to accessories, I decorate different colours for different seasons. So this mural was going to be tonal. After I was happy with my design, I got to work and was kindly greeted by a few guests, which I released into the wild. Next, I dusted, washed, and drew on the walls all the enchanted oak tree shapes from my plan. And my next step was to draw the fir trees. But instead of drawing them, I decided to use masking tape, taping it from the floor to the ceiling and leaving different amounts of space between the tape, making it look less like a striped design and more quirky looking. I then revealed my first colour choice. A little boring, I know. It was very similar to the wall colour and will give the impression that these furs are far away and in the distance. After the paint was dry, I removed the masking tape. Then the same colour grey, I painted the bottom of the walls, creating a little mystical scene on the floor, and then painted inside the oak tree sketches I sketched earlier. I loved how this came out and how they looked like magical shadows, but the plan was to do both walls. So I did just that. And finally, the base of the walls were complete. For the final step, I was to use a slightly darker grey, and I used this colour to paint a few trees in the foreground, but this time with more depth and detail. To add the detail, I used lighter grey and a tester pot of darker grey.
By this point in the day, I was absolutely shattered. And after I did half the job, I got distracted by my shadow on the wall and made the most of my furniture not being there so I could well and truly be a fairy dancing within the enchanted forest. The next day, I knew what I had to do finish the trees. So a quick hour or so flew past and they added depth and highlights to the trees and I was really happy with the style I did them, which was of course completely improvised. I then finally moved all my furniture back, yet there was one thing I did not put back and that was the tree. You see, I had another idea. I recently bought this plant stand and the reason why I liked it was because it had a floor to ceiling pole with no screws required. It has these little shelves that come with it to place plants upon, however I wanted to use this for a different purpose and there is one place to go to show you what that is. I went back to the tangled lookouts. However, this time we are going further in towards the tangled trees in the distance. And it really does not disappoint. Here you see something so majestic, something straight from a fairy tale. This beautiful, wondrous yew tree. Yews were seen as sacred trees to the ancient druids, and this tree leads me to that time. They can live for thousands of years, and their energy and ethereal nature just overwhelm me every time I am in their presence. And it is this tree I am going to recreate around my plant stands. But how am I going to do this? Well, I have been collecting boxes recently, lots and lots of boxes and I wanted to use these as the basic structure of my tree. I first made a base for the tree and then found what the width of the tree was going to be, then built up the height of this on the ground using plenty of duct tape and strong cardboard as I didn't want the tree to collapse on itself. I then wrapped the structure around the tree and added loads more duct tape and cardboard to strengthen the structure. And once that was done, I cut holes within it so I could make use of the shells within and also added one lonely branch on top. Of course, I had to test the structure to see if it was sturdy enough, and I was very pleased to say it passed the test. After building the structure, I moved on to the texture of the tree, and for this I used newspapers. I rolled up scroll shapes and then glued these onto the tree to create the bumpy texture the yew tree's bark had. And of course, I had to add a little quirk here and there. I added more and more rolled up newspaper, continuing its shape upwards so it would look like one big structure. And finally my tree was beginning to take shape in the form of a newspaper tree. And I loved it so. The next day, I knew it was going to get a little messy as it was time for paper mache. I used a cup of flour, a cup of water and half a tablespoon of salt to make mine. I have looked at various ways of paper mache and it seemed like this method would make the outside sturdier and you would only need one coat for it to be completely stiff. And finally, once it had dried, I actually chose a colour that was not grey, or blue for that matter. It was actually a very light brown and I used this colour as the base colour for the tree. I also incorporated a darker tone that was a tester pot to darken in between the crevices and use the lighter grey I'd used before as a highlight. I really didn't put too much effort into painting this tree as as I have said before I really find that the more carefree I am with painting trees the more realistic they look. Finally, off camera, I also added a top coat lacquer that will help the structure to last longer and make it wipeable if it becomes dirty. And finally, 
it was complete and I was absolutely shattered but then I realized it was time for the finishing touches I've collected items over the past couple of years for my lounge that are all quite quirky and different I also have a bit of an obsession with cushions to decorate my home for the season I used green and lots of it. I also fell in love with this wisteria in which I had to make over my arch with, but I was slightly concerned that my lounge would look like a child's playroom, but after adding a few final vintage items it looked neither adult, neither childlike, it just felt like me and like home and with that said it was complete. I cannot believe the transformation and how my vision came to life. It worked out okay and I cannot believe it. The tree, very quirky in nature, fills me with joy and the trees, although they are very subtle, I feel that it was a great idea to make them subtle because of course there is a huge tree in front of them and I feel the ratio of minimal and slightly over the top is just right. I honestly cannot explain my style and what kind of style this room is now, but whatever it is, I feel like it is just me and this is where I belong. And whenever I am within it, it takes me back to the woods to feel the beautiful ancient wisdom the yew tree bears. Thank you so much for watching Enchanted Ones. I truly hope you have enjoyed this makeover video. I think it is well and truly my favourite video to date. Please do let me know what you liked the most below. And if you could craft anything within your home, what would it be? All my love.